This is Chelsea Schaefer, and this is season four of The Score. You all have listened to this podcast three quarters of a million times, and we are here in season four to bring you even more of what you love. Hey everyone, and welcome to this episode of The Score. I am your co-host of The Score, Caitlin Gustav, and today I got to sit down with the one and only Kelsey Chase. Actually, correction, that is Kelsey Chase Domer because she recently got married. So it's really weird to roll that off the tongue. I'm so used to calling her Kelsey Chase, which I'm sure many people are. Uh, But I am so excited for this episode. I love sitting down with Kelsey. She's one of my really good friends, so it's fun to sit down and discuss topics of breakaway roping and team roping with a with a buddy so kelsey is well on her way she has qualified for her first ever national finals of breakaway roping these girls the breakaway ropers get to run for 10 head so kind of like the nfr just not at the thomas and mac with the nfr so uh, in this episode, Kelsey talks about that. We talk about how the sport is growing. It's going to get there. It's just when. So, um, And she talks a lot about how patience, you, you know, it's all about being patient because it, the time will come. But I'm so excited. This episode was really fun. I hope you guys enjoy this episode. And don't forget, this episode is brought to you by one of Kelsey's sponsors, Durango Boots. So listen for that special promo code and check out Durango. This episode is brought to you by Durango Boots. Durango takes great pride in its Western heritage and is committed to making durable boots men, women, and kids can rely on. They combine the latest materials and advanced concepts with decades of Western boot building experience to craft boots that are uniquely capable and comfortable. Whether working, riding, or roping, Durango Boots are made for what you do. Be sure to like and follow Durango Boots on Facebook at Durango Boot, Instagram and Twitter at Durango Boots, and visit them at www.durangoboots.com and use code KELSEY20 for 20% off your next order. This is Durango Country. You guys, I am sitting with Kelsey Chase, and it's not Kelsey Chase anymore. It's Kelsey Chase Domer. Are you keeping Chase in it? Uh, probably won't, but I'll keep it for now <laughs> till we get used to it. It's a little confusing. <laughs> yeah, after the first year, I'll just change everything over. Yeah, so we'll just jump into this podcast and talk about that. Uh, Kelsey, you just recently got married. Um, yep. Hot coming off of the Pro Rodeo Trail. <laughs> yeah, um, don't kinda. recommend. <laughs> yeah. yeah, tell me about I mean, this life change. Yeah, we got married October 2nd, so of course, you know, end of the season was... September 30th right (laughs) and so it was it was kind of nerve-wracking coming down to the end of it just a little stressful but no Mm -hmm. everything worked out great wedding was great made dinner far so that obviously Mm -hmm. made it made it more fun too but um no it's been good we've what two and a half weeks down Mm -hmm. (laughs) yeah really going for us going great it's going great (laughs) but no it's all been good yeah and like you said you made the national finals of breakaway roping this year Mm -hmm. and last year you were so close and you just missed it um Kind of talk about that whirlwind coming from, you know, not necessarily saying you had an off season previously, right. but just, you know, what what were the differences, I guess? Um, last year, you know, I went just like everybody else did. It's not like I, I didn't really go. There's some people, of course, I went to some more rodeos, but it wasn't for like a try. I just kind of got to a point where I thought I was probably okay, and I wasn't. That mm-hmm. was just a mistake I made, and then some of the rodeos at the end just didn't work out, but that's how it goes. I mean, Mm -hmm. it happens every year to somebody in some event, if not multiple events. So Mm -hmm. that was just kind of a learning experience for me. And then this year there was a lot more rodeos that we could go to, which I mean, everybody was fair game. So Mm -hmm. it was nothing, anything like that. But we, uh, we jumped in, started, you know, we went to Reno first and pretty much stayed out there from then on till Salinas and Pendleton or Pendleton and Salinas. But, um, no, it was good. We got to go to a lot of rodeos, rodeo with our ADN help. Mm -hmm. Um, so we, we stayed out there and we went to a bunch, but yeah. it was good. We we learned a lot of stuff. I've got learned a lot on how you know entering and stuff. I think I'll do some things different next year, but mm-hmm. it was good. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And uh, not I don't want to dive too far into it. I'd, I'd love to pull Hope aside and talk about it, but you sure. have obviously been in Hope's shoes mm-hmm. where you were so close to making it and just fell short. Right. Um, have you two talked about that? Uh, I mean, of course we've talked about it, and it was. 
you want your traveling partner to mm -hmm. go to or your friend. I mean, we're really good friends, but, um, I mean, both of us, you can look back on numerous rodeos, you mm -hmm. know, where you maybe didn't, you know, rope as good as you should have, or you drew good and didn't use that draw. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff going into it, you know mm -hmm. how that is, but I just, you know, told her I was proud of her. No mm -hmm. big deal. You're still a badass roper. You know, don't, <laughs> don't let that affect you. What well, she won't. She'll yeah. bounce back. No big deal. But mm -hmm. it was, it was heartbreaking for her and it was, you know, it was heartbreaking for us too. Cause we want her there beside us. But yeah, I mean, that was just kind of part of it. Every, it happens. Like I said, every year happens to somebody. So mm -hmm. just got to move on. I know. It just, it's like, especially with it being like in the rig. Like yeah. Yeah, Maybe it was it was you, different, you know, it, everything was so close. We went mm -hmm. all went to the same rodeos and stuff like that, but that's yeah. just, cards didn't fall in her favor, but I can only imagine how it's going to be next year. She'll bounce back. And, oh, yeah. Yeah. Be we'll watch out for Hope T. Oh, yeah. For sure. <laughs> so, and I know pre if people want to go on breakawayropingjournal.com, uh, there is a short little article with you on, like, the four things you've uh, mm -hmm. learned from pro <laughs> rodeoing. Um, can you kind of expand on that more? How has, since this year was more full force than the first year, um, kind of, what were the learning curves, I guess? Well, this year having so many more rodeos, you know, over the 4th of July or over mm -hmm. some places, we had to fly. Mm -hmm. We had to send some horses, had, had two rigs out at, at a, you know, at some point, but that was just learning where to go or how we can make it, you know, trying to make every rodeo and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. it got it got pretty tricky. We were all over sometimes, you know. <laughs> sometimes I didn't even feel like we could breathe. But, mm -hmm. um, no, just being different, you know, and now we can look back how we entered this last year and mm -hmm. say, hey, we want to do it again this year, or we don't. We want to try something different. That's just kind of how it goes, you know. Mm -hmm. Everybody that's been pro rodeo for years know what they want to do. That's mm -hmm. just part of us kind of being rookies because yeah. really all breakaway ropers are rookies at this point. It doesn't matter who you are. Yeah. Um, but, you know, we haven't been in that situation yet. So I think everybody's learning on where they want to go or what they want to change and stuff like that. But yeah, so I think, I don't know that you ever stop learning in that, or, you know, <laughs> aspect, but <laughs> when, you know, you can call people out there like, Hey, what would you do? You know, mm -hmm. enter here or can you make it here and stuff like that. And, and those guys know our girls. So mm -hmm. it's just something we have to work with and kind of figure out. Yeah, which it's so funny, like, I'm glad you said that, like, all breakaway ropers are necessarily rookies these right. days. Like, I remember when I first came out to Texas and met all you guys, I remember I was the one calling you guys, like, sure. okay, like, what do we do? Like, where, what amateur rodeo do we go to? Right. WPRA approved? Like, mm -hmm. and now it's like everyone is literally at ground zero. Yep. I mean, necessarily. For sure, yeah, because when we go back home and amateur, you know, yeah, mm -hmm. we can tell you the ins and outs and what to do and what not to do and if you can make these rodeos or not, so... <laughs> Yeah, everybody out here, it's learning. And it's it's hard, too, because, you know, not every rodeo has breakaway yet. Mm -hmm. And so we kind of have to pick and choose, you know, some of the bigger ones. You know, maybe somebody else can go. They're like, oh, yeah, this is what we do. Mm -hmm. Well, two of your, you know, three or four rodeos don't even have breakaway. So our deal is completely different. So yeah. it's, you know, it's kind of hard on both sides. You can get some input, you know, mm -hmm. or some opinions from other sides. But it's still a completely different ballgame for us right now. Yeah, definitely. Um, and I want to talk about more... Um, you know, leading up to the NFR, but I want to talk about, um, the traveling. Like mm -hmm. you, you usually don't typically travel with Larry D and Hope. Right. Um, you're usually um, in, you know, Jackie's mm -hmm. rig or, you know, yep. that crew. What, what made you go into Larry D and Hope's rig? Like, you know, what was the deciding factor to rodeo with them all year? Um, honestly, at the, at the beginning of the year, um, I talked to Bo Peterson and mm -hmm. we were going to travel together and, um, even Abby Medlin. Mm -hmm. And then Bo had ACL surgery, and so she got a little bit of a late start. We kind of had to go out there early, um, and she had to do some different things. And mm -hmm. then Abby's good horse got hurt, and so she didn't have one that she was confident on, which I completely understand. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't want to just jump in there on whatever. So she still got to go. She went out there with Blaine, of course, and, mm -hmm. and entered where she could. But um, So then I didn't have a traveling partner at one point. I was like, <laughs> oh, gosh. And I had talked to Jackie some, and we both we sat down there and talked, you know, and it's – she – She's got two kids now, mm -hmm. and Cheyenne was going to go with her, and then she got somebody to help with the kids, and so it's like, man, that's that's a lot a in one ring. bus, which jokes on us because Larry D and Hope and I actually jumped in the bus a couple times <laughs> with all of them, so it was even more. And, you know, Larry D had talked to me, and she was like, you know, what are you going to do? Who are you going to travel with? And mm -hmm. I was like, well, I don't have anybody right now, so that's kind of how that worked. But, yeah. it, I mean, it worked out good. We got to, we got to send rigs, and a couple of times we kind of got to work, you know, with Jackie and Cheyenne and them, and... Mm -hmm. 
kind of go all together that way so yeah yeah it was like you guys had your own separate rigs but it, mm -hmm. you guys were one big like caravan <laughs> yeah at one point my rig actually went with shady and she took <laughs> it to Prescott and some places like that and so my rig was out there and mm -hmm. we had Larry D's rig and if we needed to fly to those rodeos and jump on the horses that were in my rig we did and, mm -hmm. and we all met up at some places and I mean it was it was crazy <laughs> <laughs> sure so speaking of rigs um any breakdowns problems oh, i remember like Greeley. i remember Greeley. you guys were kind of trying to figure out i rig mean situations literally the first you know we took off to reno like uh -huh. that was the start of our summer and we drew up early in reno so mm -hmm. we were going to go to reno we were going to leave the horses and rigs out there and actually fly back for a couple in texas that were good and before we even got to Reno, we had heck. We had flats, which ended up being axle problems. So, I mean, Larry D put in like three new axles, six new tires, and then it messed up the truck brakes and it messed oh, up, geez. well, it messed up the trailer brakes, which messed up the truck brakes. Mm -hmm. So it was a lot of stuff before we even got to Reno. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, Greeley was not far after that. And that was generator and more axles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All kinds of stuff. So, yeah, it was wild for us. Very, very stressful. <laughs> for sure stressful on Larry D because, of course, you know, it's her rig per mm -hmm. se so but we got it all knock on wood yeah. <laughs> got it all figured out handled <laughs> so yeah that's yeah, what i don't think people realize like it's not it you know it's fun you look at it mm -hmm. and like that's what that's something i had to do looking back because like i want to be out there on the road with you guys but i really can't because you look at it and people don't count in the cost factors of yeah. the vet bills the truck the trailer mm -hmm. you know what if you do break down right like, that's what people don't really look into they For just sure. look at the big picture of oh they get to go rodeo yeah and then <laughs> i i ended up having tr trouble later mm -hmm. um get pretty close to like sheridan cheyenne i went to multiple chevy places all in that <laughs> area and I, fi I finally just got it home and sent it home to dad i said do something with it. I, <laughs> it. I literally just got it back um shoot right before my wedding oh my, gosh. my parents brought it i didn't even know it was finished yet i just got it then so it was thankfully thankfully i was with larry d and help all summer because mm -hmm. my after cheyenne my rig was pretty much xed oh geez but yeah so i i got to take well just like during oklahoma's rich just a couple weekends ago that was mm -hmm. the first time i even got to take my rig <laughs> since cheyenne oh my gosh <laughs> yeah. You've been so, foot. <laughs> yeah, pretty much but no, it worked out. Actually, my cousin the other day um, Snapchatted to me, and she was like, man, how do you guys do it living on the road? You know, we've had mm -hmm. some trouble just trying to go on a little trip, and mm -hmm. it's stressful. I'm like, well, you just kind of got to roll with things and be thankful you have good friends yeah. somewhere down the road that can help you out and take care of you. So yeah. just part, it happens to everyone. I mean, it's not you're not going to just get by and not have a little trouble at some mm -hmm. point. So just part of it. Yeah, gotta definitely. Go with it. Definitely. Well, um, Another thing that helps you get down the road is obviously the horsepower, mm -hmm. um, which I know you have your great horse, Little Man. Uh, yep. You rode Hope's horse, Beasley, which she's sold now. Yep. Um, you know, talk about those horses that you rode this summer. Yeah, I, uh, my Roan, the one that I've had, you know, mm -hmm. forever, he, he was pretty sore at the beginning of the summer, and I didn't, we couldn't really figure out what was wrong with him, so I didn't have a chance to take him out. But yeah, I got to, I rode Re Beasley at the um, Winnie Ride. Mm -hmm. And then this summer, Samantha Fulton let me ride hers a couple of times. Got on T Boy mm -hmm. a couple of times, and then um, Alex Fott let me get on hers at Baker, and then I ended Baker on Hopes. So Baker was a pretty good rodeo for yeah. me. So that was <laughs> that was I was thankful for friends to let me on their good ones there. Um, but yeah, little little man took the blunt of a lot of stuff. But mm -hmm. that's I just had him all summer. But I was I mean I got to jump on some others when I needed to. So. Yeah, and they're not just, nice. they're not dinks. Right. You were <laughs> I jumped on good ones for sure. Yeah. So. yeah, that definitely makes it worthwhile. Yep. Yep. Um, and so now, are you, I'm assuming you're going to be riding at Little Man at the National Finals Breakaway? Yep, I'll ride him, and then I've been getting Roni legged up, and mm -hmm. he's, he's felt pretty good, so I'll bring him out as a backup, just in case, but... Mm -hmm. Yeah, little man. He'll be the go-to for sure. That's exciting. I love <laughs> yeah. little man. I love Roni too, but I love little man. I know <laughs> um, and so what is, you know, or I want to talk, yeah, like, okay, so going in, like, you guys didn't really get to practice a whole lot. Like, being home, you guys practice all day and right. then go to the ropings on right. the weekend. Um, what, you know, was there anything you were fighting your head with all summer or, you know, how, how was the mental game and not being able to practice? Yeah, I mean, that was tricky for sure. Um, I always just try to tell myself, you know, I'm not going to forget how to rope mm -hmm. <laughs> in that amount of time and my horse isn't going to forget either. Of course, there's sometimes where 
we got to go to a couple places and score them and work on that because that's the biggest deal when you just go at them over and over and over mm -hmm. again. You know, when you're at the house, you score more than you rope most mm -hmm. of the time, but when you go to 15 rodeos in a row and never get to run a practice calf, it, you know, they're anticipating it and you're anticipating it too. So you just kind of got to trust the process, which is way harder than it mm -hmm. sounds. Um, and you get, you know, got to remind yourself, you know, hey, just do your job, mm -hmm. follow the rules. Everybody has the same rules, so follow them. But it did get tricky a couple times because, you know, if the rodeo before, you know, you rope in the performance and you're headed to the slack and the rodeo before you didn't mm -hmm. score very good, well, that's kind of in the back of your mind come the next one. And mm -hmm. you just got to throw it out and be like, hey, like, just you trust it. Thing. Yep. Think about what you want to do and just go for it. You can't, mm -hmm. you know, you can only control so much, so... It, I tried to focus on that a lot. Like I said, yeah. I, I failed at it too, just like everybody does, but you, you kind of got to tell yourself that to get through. If not, it's way yeah. harder than it already is. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. No, it, I mean, it's completely a mental game out mm -hmm. there. For sure. It will, if you let it, it will eat you up. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Oh, gosh. Absolutely. Well, finals are coming up mm -hmm. in a little over a month. Yep. yep. What's... What's the preparation going to look like? Have you already started? I mean, you rope every day, but... <laughs> right. um, I haven't really started for the finals yet. I was going to let this week get finished. You know, we're out here in Vegas for mm -hmm. the WCRA All-Girl. Um, so I was going to kind of get through this week, and then when I get back, um, they're talking about, you know, what, what kind of cattle they're going to have, so we're going to get that figured out, and then I'll call and get the setup of the box and the barrier mm -hmm. and fix my box at home and just make runs out of it on every horse you yeah. know I've just I really don't have a lot I've just got my two good ones and I've got a young one but I'm mm -hmm. just gonna set it up there and and kind of go at them I'm I don't know I haven't decided exactly how I'm gonna go about it but I'm probably I'm just gonna go you know mm -hmm. through that setup and just kind of get the feel of it and then set the barrier up a couple times and, and do that but I don't know I'm not one to just you know bank on that every time you know go every day and just mm -hmm. rope with that setup but, you know, and we've done it. We've done it for the semifinals and, and mm -hmm. different things like that. Like, I'm going to practice it for sure, but I'm just going to stick with what I've done yeah. my whole life. You yeah. know, make sure my horse feels good, I feel good, and we're scoring good. Because, yeah. I mean, it doesn't matter how many times you go through that setup. If you're not confident in one of those areas, then mm -hmm. it's hard enough. Yeah. So, but that's kind of my game plan right now. Like yeah. I said, if it, it might change. But <laughs> as of right now, I'm just going to get home and set up the, the box for that to be like that. And then just mm -hmm. practice out of it, kind of get the feel of it. and go from there yeah don't don't fix what isn't broke yeah that's what i was actually so you know the wpra finals are before mm -hmm. that too and i was talking to shelby bojali yesterday about getting ready for it because i have to tie down and stuff too oh, and i no. said you know <laughs> no. you know years before this month i'm always stressed out mm -hmm. tired you know worn out um and it's because you just go you try to head as much as you can heal mm -hmm. as much as you can break away tie down and by the time I get to the finals, I'm so exhausted or sore and worn out. Like, mm -hmm. it's not even fun. You yeah. know, I've, I've beat myself more often than not there. And so I told this, and I was like, man, I'm just going to, you know, be confident, not mm -hmm. wear myself out. Just, you know, practice each one how I need to and, and mm -hmm. kind of do that and not overdo it. Because that's already proved that it hasn't been the best overdoing it. I mean, yeah. I'm not saying I haven't had success, but... I'm just going to try to be, <laughs> not be so tired. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> it's all right. I mean, that weekend's hard enough, but mm -hmm. I think I'm going to try to do that the same for the NFR. Just like this week, we've, you know, we got married and mm -hmm. kind of, I let little man chill out for a little bit after we got back and got, finally got some calves and got to roping. And when I got out here, I was not exhausted. Mm -hmm. I, you know, felt good and was ready to go. So, and it's, yeah. that makes a pretty big difference. And you're not either physically or mentally exhausted. No, so. definitely. And yeah. for people that are listening to this, whether you're listening to it the day it comes out or down the future, we're sitting at the South Point Hotel in Las Vegas for the Women's Rodeo World Championships, mm -hmm. um, and so which Kelsey is competing in. Um, and so that's what she's talking about getting yeah. here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to take a break from this episode to talk about our sponsors, Durango Boots. The Durango brand includes a variety of styles for men, women, and kids that include performance-driven western boots, perfect for any rodeo athlete, premium work boots for dynamic work-driven individuals, casual comfortable western boots, tough and durable farm and ranch boots, classic western boots, premium exotic boots, fashion-forward western boots, and the ever-iconic American flag boot. At Durango, we ride for the brand. We're proud of who we are and the boots we build. We honor the cowboy way of life 
and proudly live our Western values. Be sure to like and follow Durango Boots on Facebook at Durango Boot, Instagram and Twitter at Durango Boots, and use code KELSEY20 for 20% off your next order just for the SCORE fans on DurangoBoots.com. This is Durango Country. Speaking of women's world, or no, I want to go back to tie down. Mm -hmm. Because you used to tie down a lot. Right. I I feel like you've slowed down a little bit. Yep. And there's not as many, you know... Mm -hmm. I guess there are probably the same amount of jackpots, but there's more of everything else. You Mm -hmm. know, more all-girl team ropings that have a lot of money, you know, bigger breakaway jackpots. Of course, we took off in rodeo this summer, so... Mm -hmm. It's it's been different on that, so I haven't I haven't tied down a whole lot, which I've kind of lost that drive and desire a little <laughs> bit <laughs> coming through. But I think it's just because there's been so much other stuff. But yeah, I uh, I I entered that. Uh, Jackie was we were joking. She was like, I said, did you enter the tie down? She's like, no. Did you? I was like, yeah. She's like, really? I was like, yeah. I'm gonna give it a couple more years. Yes. <laughs> I'm gonna give it a couple more years. She's like, yeah. I just can't make myself do it. I was like, well, I don't blame you. <laughs> It's hard. It yeah. is really hard. It like, is. And it's one of those things, I mean, shame on me. Like, yeah, I just go all year and not really put a whole lot of effort mm-hmm. into it and then enter the finals, but that's my choice and I can mm-hmm. be, you know, upset or happy with my decisions either way. You know what I mean? I'm not <laughs> saying that's the best way to go about it, but that's my choice and if it works out, it, mm-hmm. you know, it works out. But that's, you know, usually that's just another event you can do for all around points and mm-hmm. stuff like that at the finals. So yeah. I'm going to. Do it as long Hopefully. as I can, I guess. Hopefully sneak as long in as an all-around yeah. all world title. <laughs> For sure. For sure. <laughs> um, so now I want to go back to the Women's Rodeo World Championships. Because mm-hmm. like you said, you guys are just going and going and going. And right now at the end of the year, there's so many big things that right. you guys are entering. Right. Um, and now you get to team rope. You're mm-hmm. heading, healing, and roping calves. Yep. Um, which I don't feel like you team noped a whole lot this summer. Nope, not really. There's a couple of jackpots we could go to. You know, we went to the BFI mm-hmm. at the beginning and we team roped there, and then there was one, one in Rapid City, and then there was one in Cheyenne, which mm-hmm. I didn't actually go to the one in Cheyenne, but there was, you know, that during that area. I know a couple mm-hmm. girls did. So, yeah, but we, there wasn't a whole lot of opportunity being out on the road to do yeah. that. So, mm-hmm. but yeah, we, when I got home, though, um, team roped a little bit, went mm-hmm. to the VIP finals, went to the Capitalists. So, mm-hmm. Got to do it a little bit before we came out here. <laughs> yeah, good, good, good. Yep. <laughs> um, so what, you know, like you said, you haven't really been able to practice team roping or anything. Um, and it's pretty much muscle memory for you guys. Right. But what are the challenges, or not the challenges, like how do you, since you haven't done it in a while, mm-hmm. consistently, right. and you've been just breakaway roping, how, do, how does that cross over? Um, that's what I've tried to tell myself, you know, don't panic about it, but that's mm-hmm. the thing. We just don't have the runs we usually do. Mm-hmm. You know, when you're at home, you can team rope or breakaway or whatever you want, mm-hmm. do, doing something nearly all day long. Mm-hmm. And so I just tried to, you know, rope the dummy, rope the smarty sled, mm-hmm. you know, just kind of go through the motions, get some confidence, make sure my horses felt good. Um, last week, Annette was at Jackie's cause Annette and Jackie are open and then I'm also roping with Annette out here. So mm-hmm. We made some runs together and, and did some stuff like that, but I tried not to just overdo it, you mm-hmm. know, kind of get confident. But that's that's the hard part. You know, we haven't had as many throws. I always talk about yeah. that. You know, during the day, you can just make – it doesn't matter what you're on. You're mm-hmm. making runs or making throws, whatever. Mm-hmm. And so uh, – but I tried not to just overdo it and <laughs> panic, just kind of get – you know, healing. I heal more than I had, but mm-hmm. I uh, tried to get some more runs on the head side and some mm-hmm. throws and then – like I said, I got to rope with Annette, so that was good. Annette and I got to rope. That was, mm-hmm. I think, two days last week, so mm-hmm. that was nice to do that, rope behind her. Yeah. Because, so, you know, usually she's a, I love a healer. I know, <laughs> me too. It was good. Good practice. Got some confidence between us on mm-hmm. how everything was going to be handled, so that's kind of how I went about it, I guess. Just yeah. made sure. Don't. I mean, like I said, I, I didn't forget how, mm-hmm. so I just wanted you know, to, to break it down and make it simple. Yeah, it's you know? not like you didn't know how. You just didn't have the repetition like you yeah. usually do. Yeah, and that's what we were talking, um, Nett and I were talking, you know, you want to make some faster runs or what do you want to do in these scenarios? And I told her, I was like, sure, you know, we can we can have that in the back of our, our minds. But I am I told her, I was like, I'm not going to change something up and do something and beat, beat myself and beat ourselves. Mm-hmm. You know, there's, you know, I only have, you know, in the breakaway I can do – something a little different because yeah. I've got that confidence and I've done it more but in the healing I'm not going to change you know who I am I'm a mm-hmm. you know I'm a six healer mm-hmm. like I've 
I'm going to rope as a six healer. You know, yeah. I don't want to get out here and try to be an eight healer because that's not going to do either one of us any good. Mm -hmm. So I'm just still going to go through it. And that's kind of how we talked about it. And just same thing in the heading. I kind of actually messed up yesterday in the first round and probably should have gone one more stride before the mm -hmm. first one because I popped it off. But um, I redeemed myself in the second round and <laughs> made, a, <laughs> made a better round for myself on that side. But that's just one of those things. That, that was just kind of a mental mistake too. Mm -hmm. But that's I just wanted to be sharp out here and just do my job. Mm -hmm. Don't don't change anything when you get out here just because there's big money. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I'll never forget uh, Donnie Gay said it. I think during the American, mm -hmm. he said, you should never grit your teeth any harder for a million than when you do in the practice pen. And, which is true. You know, like if that. you're going to practice something day in and day out and you go and change something when your money's up, mm -hmm. it's a bad time to do that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Real bad do that, yeah, do that in the <laughs> practice bin and get it figured out when it's free. Mm -hmm. Don't come out here and do it for, for 60 grand. Yeah. So just, I don't know, play by the rules. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know I say that a lot, but <laughs> if you don't simplify it, it's, it's already hard enough. Mm -hmm. We gotta, we gotta keep it as simple as possible. Yeah, definitely. And, uh, I know, like you said, you're heading a little bit, uh, you're more so, I guess, a healer. Mm -hmm. Is that by choice? Like, do you like healing more? Or, um, which, you're great. Like, any way you enter, you're great. But you are one of one of the better girl healers out there. Yeah, that's, um, so a few years ago, I had the old horse nugget. Mm -hmm. You know, so I had a head horse and I ended up selling him. So I didn't have a head horse mm -hmm. for a while. Um, now, actually, the horse I ride now, um, my husband Ryan owns mm -hmm. and so you can head and heal on him so that's kind of why I've been able to head some and make that work but really I've just had a heel horse and mm -hmm. so that's kind of why I've been mainly a healer mm -hmm. but I've put a lot more work into it too I've mm -hmm. been put a lot more work into it trying to figure it out you know better yeah. my game there and so that's just something I wanted to do and focus on you know I still love to head but mm -hmm. at the time when you don't have a head horse it's hard to put a lot of work into it when you don't yeah. have the horsepower so I just really focused on my healing so that's kind of where I ended up with that. Yeah. No, I think that's cool too because, like I said, there's there's only a handful of good girl healers that you know are going to be pretty consistent, which not to knock anyone. Like, I know everyone's out there trying, but you can go out there and you know it's the Kelsey Chase, it's Jackie Crawford, Annette Stahl, J uh, Jimmy Joe Montero. Like, mm -hmm. you guys are like the old... And Whitney. Duh. Yeah. Can't forget Whitney to solve it. Yeah. <laughs> but like, never, ever. Never, ever. <laughs> <laughs> Love you, Whit. <laughs> but you guys are like the main girl healers that everyone thinks of when they're like, oh yeah, that one's a good one. Well, even even with the WCRA, they had more headers in her than healers. Mm -hmm. And that's just part of it. That's kind of how it's been. Mm -hmm. A lot more girls in it. Like you said, it doesn't really have to do with talent. You know, mm -hmm. there's talent on both sides. There's just seems like more people want to head. Mm -hmm. and it's, you know, that's great. There's a lot of all-girl headers. There's a lot yeah. of all-girl healers. But that's just kind of how it's been. There's, And usually you get to an all-girl mm -hmm. team open and usually the healers draw more runs than the headers. Mm -hmm. That's just kind of how it's always been yeah it's just never really been yeah even. it doesn't even matter so. if it's the girl groping you can go to just a yeah, even, down yeah, the road and sure. you're always like okay healers like you have extra runs mm -hmm. like yeah that's just kind of how the team roping world is uh -huh. like there's more headers than healers so yeah it's interesting i kind of want that's going to be a whole another <laughs> thing i would love to dive into that right. one day to figure out like why which i feel like i kind of understand but yeah, it's in, it's interesting that there is. I mean, always if you're a header, you always get to throw your rope. Exactly. <laughs> That's you're in control. <laughs> yeah, exactly. For sure. I caught him when he was loose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, um, and speaking of your husband Ryan, mm -hmm. um, you were riding his head horse. Are you guys gonna try to cross waves and do some training and selling and get some horses round up, or how's you know? Are you guys gonna oh. partnership like that? We might. We've talked about getting some outside horses and stuff like that. He's um, his job now allows him to work mm -hmm. a lot more, so that's been nice. He's, he got to jackpot some this summer. We actually roped together at the VIP finals, so we haven't okay. been able to do that for a long time. That's why I asked him. I was like, man, how long has it been since we've actually entered together? So that was nice. But mm -hmm. hopefully this winter, when I'm home and not gone for three months at a time, we can mm -hmm. do some stuff. Or and I've got I've got a young one um, in the breakaway, and then she started in the healing too. So mm -hmm. he's mainly a healer. So. He's kind of excited about yeah. that. But, <laughs> no, hopefully we can do something like that eventually. But mm -hmm. we've, we're have we working on our place so much right now, it's kind of, <laughs> that, yeah. that's the main focus. And then be able to bring some horses in like that. So Yeah, that'd be sweet. And yep. I, I got to say, I noticed Ryan a lot down in the boxes yesterday. Like, oh, yeah. that is so cool. that he, It doesn't matter if it's you. It, oh. It's not even just you or, oh. like, Jackie or Lee. Like, 
he's he was in the box for like everyone oh yeah yeah and like he's if a steer wasn't everybody. like looking or something like i i like just saw him on like the screen and yeah. he would run up and like grab the tail like that's cool yeah to yeah. get someone like that who's just like there to help everyone yeah yeah there's there's a few of those guys down there that help mm-hmm. a lot you know a couple of dads mm-hmm. ryan i mean we're very thankful for that because sometimes it's hard you know when especially all summer a lot of the times the breakaway mm-hmm. Slack wasn't during any other event. It's like, oh, we need to push her, yeah, and there's no one, no one here. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it's very nice to come, you know, be able to have him here and, and help. Mm-hmm. We're very thankful for that. Yeah. He's... Don't get rid of that one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Deal. <laughs> yep. No, that's awesome. That's uh, that's something I just, like, noticed, just, like, paying attention down at the boxes. Mm-hmm. I was like, that's Ryan again. And I was like, what? Yep. Like, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, he, yeah, he worked hard yesterday. There was a few of them. Jay Gilbert was down there, Mike mm-hmm. Guthier, mm-hmm. Craig Miller. So there's quite a few down there helping. Yeah, so it's yeah. Very, very thankful for that. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so now moving forward, I want more WRWC stuff. Mm-hmm. What are, because you're always entering these things. What, what's keeping you entering? What are you liking about it? Um, I mean, it's, it's pretty handy. You know, mm-hmm. if I'm already going to go enter somewhere and, I want to nominate it, I can do that. I don't have to just, you know, scope out these certain events to go to. I can go wherever I'm already, you know, want to go or entering. Mm-hmm. So that makes it pretty nice and, and easy. And then, I mean, who doesn't want to go at 60 grand? Mm-hmm. I mean, that's awesome. That's obviously been unheard of until they came around. So mm-hmm. I'm I'm definitely always going to want my name in the hat for that. <laughs> so I, uh, that's, you know, one thing you kind of keep an eye on mm-hmm. all year is, make sure you're in a spot to be able to come out here and I wanted to make sure I was in a spot head and healing and breakaway and so mm-hmm. it's it's been handy it's been you know it's relatively e- the process is easy mm-hmm. to me yeah I, I mean some of the things has been confusing there's a lot of ways to get in and out and all that and you got to learn about it but mm-hmm. I think they really are trying to make it good you know I mean how are they not if mm-hmm. they're paying 60 grand in four different events so yeah disciplines so. yeah and that's what they're like they like they say all for rodeo like they're mm-hmm. literally all for whether it's the wcra or the women's rodeo world championships like they're they're all in to help you yeah. guys and make it make rodeo what it should be i yeah, guess for sure you know they did a survey um mm-hmm. and they're always asking you know what can we do better and they listen you know mm-hmm. they put into account what we have to say and stuff like that so they don't just put their foot down and say it's our way or the highway. Mm-hmm. They, they really work and try to get everybody's opinions and make everything the best way possible. So yeah, yeah, they've been they've been awesome for our sport and for the women in our sport. So mm-hmm. it's it's been great. We're all definitely very thankful for the WCRA and the WRCR. So yeah, yeah, it gives definitely gives you guys a whole another thing to even shoot for too. Yep. Um, which they you know like the prca everything's growing um right but at least this is set in stone you guys know you do get to run for all this money mm-hmm. each year every every not even each year every some odd months yep you have this opportunity to go for yep. go for big money yeah once a year it's just for all the women and mm-hmm. but every you know quarter or however it's going to be mm-hmm. you know anybody can do it they've got all the events so yeah it's been cool because yeah they have you know they have it now and then their next one's in Cowtown in December, so yeah. it's they just keep it going. So it's it's been really good. So are you gonna do Cowtown too? Yeah, I've I've nominated. I've yeah, some points. So I know I'm sorry. already thinking about that. I'm like, oh my gosh, we have Vegas, and then we have like what a three day break, and then Cowtown. I'm like, oh jeez, that's gonna be a busy month. <laughs> <laughs> I know it is pretty crazy, but it's good. I mean, it's it's nice that it'll be in Cowtown, and I get to go home. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> close to home and makes good. That's what I'm excited about the women's finals being in yeah. Fort Worth next year. Um, yeah, but yeah, it's they've given opportunities to a lot of people, and it's it's pretty crazy what they've mm-hmm. done, really. And speaking of having that finals in Fort Worth, um, and I know it's a different association, but having the NFBR was in Texas last year. Now mm-hmm. it's in Las Vegas, which mm-hmm. is awesome. It's one step closer, hopefully, to getting in the Thomas and Mac. Are you excited it's in Vegas, or or do you wish it was in Texas? How are you feeling on that? Um, I mean. Really, where it doesn't necessarily matter where it is, but I'm glad that everything else is out there too. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't. I would hate for us to kind of be separate. I know we already are separate, but mm-hmm. at least it's in the same town as everything else going on. So mm-hmm. I think that'll be good. But they're working on it. They're trying. You know, they've they've done a lot in the last couple of years. So yeah, hopefully everything 
gets on track, but I mean, we've got a chance, you know, and this year we get 10 rounds and mm -hmm. 10 head average. So that was a change and that's something a lot of the girls wanted to change. And so they listened mm -hmm. to that and let us do it. So hopefully, mm -hmm. I, I know they're, they're working on some things and yeah. it's, it's hard to be patient when you're in this situation, but that's just part of it. That's part of the growing pain. So yeah, hopefully they can keep things going for us and keep things moving up. Yeah. I'm glad you said that too. Cause like, I know like everyone's sitting home, like everyone's bummed. It's not in the Thomas Mac, sure. me included, you know, but it, that's what I think everyone needs to sit back and realize is yes, it does suck. But I think as long as all the women keep going, keep entering, keep pushing, it's only going to get better from here. It is a growing sport and it is so new to PRCA. It's not new in the world but right. for that association it's new and I think eventually I think eventually it'll get there yeah I think mm -hmm. we just keep having to knock on doors and yeah we've, we've got some good people in the office now that are mm -hmm. you know every, everybody's working at it I know they're they're not working at it but yeah it is I mean it it is hard to be patient it's, yeah I mean of course we want to be like there too Let's but <laughs> you know we've we've got to look back and see what what actually we can expect and mm -hmm not expect and stuff like that and um, everybody has a different opinion you mm -hmm. know of course I'm just gonna <laughs> roll with it and you know <laughs> wherever I mean this I enjoy doing it and that that's everybody's choice if people don't want to go next year because you know it's, it's not. you know nothing's guaranteed yet then sure that's their choice they can you know wait till it's out but I love roping regardless I'm mm -hmm. gonna I'm either gonna amateur or pro rodeo or something like I'm I'm gonna do it regardless so mm -hmm. that's kind of how I stand on it of course I want everything to get better you know yeah. I don't I'm not just gonna sit back and say heck with it I, mm -hmm. I still want to make our sport or our event too as as good as possible but mm -hmm. we only have so much control yeah so <laughs> yeah like I said it's like just keep knocking on doors and hopefully one day someone a light's gonna light up in their head and be like oh yeah this does need to be in the NFR, like, let's no. get it done. I think it should, hopefully, hopefully that happens. I hope that day comes oh, yeah. soon. <laughs> I think it will. And, you know, WCRA, or the women's deal's been great. You know, mm -hmm. we're going to be on CBS, and so that gives us a spotlight. Mm -hmm. And then the American, they let us, the breakaway ropers are going to have a chance at the side pot this year for the first time. Yeah. So that's going to be a, a big move. And so other events like that are helping, too, and, and pushing, you mm -hmm. know. So they've added more winter rodeos and bigger rodeos, and so it's, it's getting there. I mean, of course, there. we all just want to be equal and stuff like that. But, mm -hmm. I mean, it's hard. Team Ropers went through it, too. Mm -hmm. You know, that's – we've had a hard couple of years because of COVID. And so, yeah, it's – Yeah, I mean, it's tricky. Tricky with we added money. In. Yeah, tricky with the committee. So, it's hard. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't think about it. But some committees, it's hard. You know, they said, well, you know, when you come in and add – say just 50 more rigs mm -hmm. we can't park them that's that's hard we got to make a whole nother day of slack and that's just that's a big change for some places mm -hmm. and it is mm -hmm. i mean that is hard it's not that's a pretty valid excuse you yeah know, some people just made it happen and great we're thankful for that other people are working on it mm -hmm. so i mean that's just where we're at <laughs> you yeah. know what i mean it's not i haven't really ever talked to anybody that just says yeah we hate breakaway ropers. right you know what i mean like that's we hate that event i haven't i haven't necessarily heard that but mm -hmm. It is hard. I mean, when there's been that many entries at some places, it's pretty tricky to get your rig in there and get parked yeah. with every other event. So, Gosh, it, that is one thing. Like, mm -hmm. it's hard to park places. So yeah. That's what people don't realize. Yeah. So. you got big rigs and everything, Ooh, parking but, gets tight. <laughs> yeah, everybody's trying to get it figured out. So <laughs> hopefully we can just keep moving up. So All the way to the top. <laughs> yeah. <that's right. laughs> For sure. Uh, awesome. Well, Kelsey, I don't want to hold up too much of your time. Um, we covered a lot of ground. I was excited about that. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Nice. Well, thank you, and I look forward to seeing what you do in, in December at yeah. the Orleans at the National Finals Breakaway Roping. <laughs> Thanks, pal. I'm excited. For over half a century, Durango Boots has been building the world's best, most lightweight, and authentic traditional Western boots. Using the latest materials and innovative constructions, every pair of boots is built on a long tradition of unmatched athletic performance and comfort technology. Be sure to like and follow Durango Boots on Facebook at Durango Boot, Instagram and Twitter at Durango Boots, and visit them at www.durangoboots.com and use Kelsey20 as the code for 20% off your next order. That's code Kelsey20 for 20% off your next order. This is Durango Country. 
Thank you so much for listening to this episode today, and thank you to our sponsors for bringing it to you.